Next on the list here, let's talk about Joe Budden's beef with the NBA Youngboy. I have no idea why this is a beef. It's annoying, it's frustrating, it's dumb, and it really is another reminder as to why music crit you know, music critique is in the gutter, really, because this is so uncalled for and so left field. Like, why are they talking about NBA Youngboy and saying his music is trash? I, again, objectively speaking, maybe you could have an opinion and say NBA Youngboy's music is trash, but the way Joe Bunham brought it up, randomness of it the flippant nature of it it's just so unnecessary like why he did this it really is unnecessary and especially when you consider how emotional how quick tempered nba young boy is how ravenous his fans are it kind of feels like this is on purpose he knew NBA Youngboy fans would go crazy when he said this. He knew NBA Youngboy would probably say what he said about him. So he said what he said. But I just find this whole thing so unnecessary. And if anything, this is another reminder as to why, as much as it was a joke, or much as it was a kind of a running joke during the last, you know, iteration of the Joe Budden podcast with Rory Moore, Joe Budden's label of being a hater is not really a joke. It's actually real. Like he's actually a hater, like for real. He's a legit hater, like, for real, for real. Like, it's one thing to not like the guy's music, but the way he brought up his name, the contempt in his voice about him is, like, pure hater shit. Let's play the clip. What else do I have written down here? Uh, you ready to tell the truth about NBA Youngboy? Uh, I'm not ready to do this. Uh, what's the truth? That nigga's trash. He's horrible. He is horrible. Damn. He is horrible. He is really, 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 really bad. As a rapper or a person? I'm not, I don't know him as a person. Oh, okay. I'm only speaking about music. Music. He's really, really, really bad. And that thing happened with him where when he was out, the label pushed a button and did some YouTube shit. So then all the little kids had to just come to the fucking, come to the gathering and tell you about NBA young boy views and how great he is and how awesome he is and how amazing he's doing. Now that the label's backed up a bit, and now that we done had about three or four projects while he's been in Utah on house arrest. He had By the way, that point there was where I realized he was hating. Because this has been a current run this has been a running theme in Rob Budden's career where he's always felt like the industry never pressed a button on him. They never gave him that boost that he needed to kind of really be spread to the masses. And he feels like there are other people, other artists who at the time when he was around got that button or even newer kids nowadays. And he still has a little bit of bitterness about it. He still has a little bit of bitterness around seeing people who clearly have an industry push behind them, which again, it's none of his business really because he's a retired rapper. Why does he care who gets marketing push or who gets label support and stuff it doesn't really matter in the big scheme of things but that little line that he said there for me was an indication of that kind of little bit of hate that he has there for the industry still and how he hasn't been able to let it go way more than that i know and that's that that, I know. that to me is where the I problem know. lies because earlier young boy music don't sound like this to me like even he just dropped a single today i listened to it last night and I cut it off midway through. I'm He's just like, boy. I can't. What's the difference between his music then and now? The shit, me, I could hear it. Like that, That's bullshit, personally. I think NBA Youngboy's music hasn't gone considerably that bad. If anything, he's put out too much music and it's hard to consume it. But I think NBA Youngboy is doing the same thing that Gucci Mane did when he came out of jail. I remember this iconic interview with Gucci Mane with fucking Charlemagne. Me being a good, a big Gucci Mane fan, I remember the time thinking, man, Gucci Mane's dropping too many things, isn't it? And I can't get through all of it shit. And I think I remember him talking to um, to Charlemagne, and Charlemagne basically asked him that question: Why don't you have more quality over quantity? And he said that my fans love me for who I am. They love my approach to music, but they also want to hear from me all the time. And I make music for my fans. So my fans are always going to listen to my stuff, regardless. If people think I put out too much content, too much music, they're not my fans and they, don't, they wouldn't listen to my project anyway. So I don't really care what they have to say. I'm only doing this for my fans. I was like, ah, oh, that makes a lot more sense that you're servicing your own fans by just dropping every week because your diehard fans are always going to listen to it shit and everyone else can just kind of, you know, keep it moving. And that makes a lot of sense. And also, nowadays, with technology being the way it is, and, you know, clearly M.E.A. Youngboy has a talent for finishing songs in a heartbeat. Why wouldn't you put them all out? Like, there's stories of Future at the moment. There's, there's a running theme that Future allegedly has like 400 to 700 songs. That's the running total, I think, Future. 
there's a running story that Future has like 407 that are just done that have never been released. Why would you just like, so what are you doing with those songs? You're holding them forever. There's never going to be the perfect time to drop them. They might be a bit old. Your sound might have changed. Your life experiences have, di have been different, whatever. A different stage of your career. I get why people want to just drop. And I also get the other, the other side of things, like a Tyler, the creator. He's more so, he locks in and works on albums when he works on them. And when he's not working on an album, he's not making anything. So that the music, when it comes out, it's somewhat fresh. I think that's why the Drake album was so good, right? The one that came out with the six tracks, right? The fucking um, Scary Hours, whatever. That was so good because he said, I think in a tweet where he put out that he made that whole thing in like a week or something or two weeks. So it was all fresh. None of it was like leftover stuff from her loss or anything else or that ilk. But I just think in general, even if NBA Youngboy's music isn't for you, the way he drops has been the way he drops forever um, since he's come into the industry. Um, I don't think his music quality has degraded that much anyway from the time that he released. And I just think considering that he wasn't in the news, he wasn't a first week sales thing, bringing him up like this was just a pure hater thing. So I wasn't surprised when NBA Youngboy heard that and replied the way that he replied, right? In very classic NBA Youngboy way. Last thing I dropped was decided side two. My album still in the top ten. Pussy ass nigga, don't speak on me. I don't play that shit. Don't rat on me neither. You pussy bitch. Yeah, bubba. I said, want that piece about turning the old <laughs> stupid <laughs> dumb bitch. Do your dick don't even get hard no more. Count ass nigga. I love how angry he gets, bro. I love how angry this guy gets. He's fucking incredible. It's like it's like he's sleeping or he's angry. There's no in between emotion. Oh, ain't no ain't no sabotaging me, bitch. Fuck wrong with that nigga, man. Don't rat on me. I'm don't rat on me, bitch. And I don't want to argue with your bitch ass, nigga. Hey, bitch, you do all them interviews. Hey, come on, great nigga, mountain and talk to me, nigga. You can't. Bitch, if you can't do that, man, hey, you bitch made, nigga, shut your fucking mouth. 60,000. <laughs> bitch. <laughs> That's six times in a row? That's 60,000, bitch. Come on, my money, nigga. Joe Budden, bitch ass, old bitch ass. <laughs> Yo, the fucking aggression from him is so much, man. It's so unnecessary, but I get it. And of course, Joe Budden heard this and he clapped back himself. Joe was cloud chasing with that. Forever. No, he's he's a, he's a, he he. His podcast is the number one music podcast. podcast. So he, he... I just want to say, I'm... oh, who said that in the stream chat? Who said that in the Twitter chat? Who's sucking him off? Yuck, man. Grown men sucking off. But there's nothing worse. Go on Joe Budden's Twitter and see how people reply to him and stuff. Joe Budden's reply, guys. And it will make you want to bath in your own mouth. Grown men. Grown men with kids and shit. Sucking up to Joe Budden on the internet. <sighs> Way bigger than him. Stop this. You are not oh, bigger shit. than young boy, Joe. I think exactly. you are not bigger than young boy. I think you guys should talk. Exactly. I think he says wait. By the way, pause by that as well. You're not bigger than young boy. That I think there's a pause there somewhere. There should be a pause there, no? No? I think there's a pause there. You're bigger than him. He's speaking on a overall presence platform like no, not, not the about young about the you Joe Budden is not bigger than NBA Youngboy in any way, shape, or form, by the way. You young is even dick comparisons. I think NBA Youngboy probably hasn't beat on that. And that's no pause there as well. Idiots get fooled by these label metrics and these digital tricks. Would you like me to read you the numbers on Young Boy's last six projects? No, Yo, go I, for no, it. No, go no, for no, it. No, 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 no. Go for it. Go for it. Yo, don't, don't cut him off while he's talking. Yo, Joe, go for it. Right. You want to read? I mean, I don't want to. I, did, I mean, I, didn't, uh, I, no, had, I didn't, didn't think I had to do this. Cause, cause Imagine Joe Budden at his age, sitting around in his house googling nba young boy first week sales and shit going on twitter space like honestly this guy is like you've achieved too much in your life man you're old you're 40 something plus you've made millions from podcasting why are you just chilling with your wife relaxing with your kids and shit why are you doing this like what is this this is some pure hater shit man joe Budden is like awful i'm sure someone here is recording oh. <laughs> Uh, I mean, we're always, we you, record every... It's on you. 2022. <laughs> Real 20, quick. 2022, never broke again. Quando Rondo, LLC, 14,000 copies. Week one, Billboard position 62. Then you have uh, Fed's Baby, Money Bag, yo. 2017, 21,000. Week one, 3,800 uh, 3, degrees. 
October 7th, 2022. 24,000. Uh, what else we got? Better than you with the baby. March 4th, 2022. 28,000. Until I return, 2020. 29,000. Stop this, yo. Stop. You skipped a bunch of projects, bro. You skipped a bunch of projects. Loads of projects in between. 29,000. Here, we got another one here. 2022. Drama, I got a family. 39,000. We got another one here. September 6th. Never broke again. 39,000. We got another one here. 2018. 43,000. We got another one. 43,000. 2018. We got another one here. 51,000, 2023. The point is, you, you're doing a lot for somebody that don't sell more than 60,000 records. Come on, bro. Like, stop it. I get they care for the bots, Joe. Yeah, I, I know. I know. I know. But enough of it. Enough young people just saying stupid shit in hip hop. We get it. You like who you like. Awesome. But it's not this dominant force that you niggas keep trying to make it out to be. Y'all did the same thing with Grant. Y'all do the same thing with all these new niggas that y'all like. Just stop, yo. Just capping a whole bunch of hate and shit again and again. It doesn't go back to the fucking music. There's probably a good conversation to be had about NBA's quality of music and his ability to make bangers, his abilities to make hit records, his ability to make those songs that will really cement his legacy. You could have a really constructive conversation about that. But Joe is just such a hater. And I think that damage of his career and how it didn't... Because think about it, right? Joe Budden is really talented as a rapper, right? Super talented. Maybe one of the best to actually grab a mic. But his career as an artist never really panned out. That must be really hard to take. When you're really good at rapping, you can probably outbar and outrap everybody in your fucking peer group, right? In your age bracket with your fucking eyes closed. Even now that he's taking all this time off for fucking hip rapping and shit. But then your career never panned out. Then for it to be many years after the fact, and these kids are, are fucking, you know, blowing up over saying, da -da -ba -da -ba -da 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 you can understand why he's a bit of a hater. You can get it. But he's now made a career for himself as a podcaster where he's made millions just talking and critiquing about culture. That should be already enough. That should make up for all the stuff that you didn't get from music. But maybe it shows that deep down, Joe Budden's real true love has always been music. And the fact that he's never made it is always going to be something that he's never going to be able to let go. He's going to resent it. He's going to resent the music industry forever. So he takes it out on artists who he feels like don't deserve their success or, you know, maybe um, the public maybe gasses them up too much or something. Maybe that's why he's like the way he is. But this guy on fucking Twitter actually killed Joe when he went through the numbers, right? Number of platinum albums, Joe, zero. NBA Youngboy has two NBA Youngboy has, what, what's that? Platinum. These are all platinum albums. Jesus Christ. AI Youngboy 2, two times platinum. Until Death, Call My Name, two times platinum. Top, platinum. Sincerely Control, platinum. AI Youngboy, platinum. For Respect, Freedom, platinum. Real of platinum. So NBA Youngboy is so clear of Budden that it's not even worth talking about. It's such a weird beef. But again, I think... Part of it is obviously trolling. Part of it is to get himself on the feed and be a topic of conversation. But I also think part of it, fundamentally, Budden at heart is really a hater. Like he actually is an unrivaled, undisputed, pure breed hater. Because he's made it in life as well. That's the thing is well, he's not like a hater where the conventional hater is like, oh, some guy in the comments who is living in their parents' basement like me, who's covered in fucking Cheeto dust, right? Who has no money and all this stuff. Nah. Joe has money, Joe's has success, Joe has a career in himself, and he's actively hating on the kids because it reminds him of the lack of support he got when he was coming up in music. <laughs> it's fucking funny. I fucking love it, but it's so unnecessary. It really is fucking unnecessary, and I wish it wasn't the case, but yeah. Big up, um, what's that? Um, Gotham Hip Hop, Joey, for fucking laying down a smackdown with those fucking numbers and making it very clear who's on top and who isn't, but... Let's see what happens. Let's see what transpires. Don't be surprised if you see a, a video piece content with Joe and NBA Youngboy sitting together having some sort of interview because, you know, maybe that was also the play. Who knows going forward? But yeah, that's a bit of a shame. What can you do?